Hello! Welcome to a new calculator tutorial for the TI-84+. Plus. Today we'll be discussing how to use a few of the random functions available for the Texas Instrument Calculators. Now, note that these are not truly random, and are more considered to be pseudo-random. However, it's one of the best alternatives to using a random number table, or just putting numbers in a hat and drawing them. I'll be discussing how to use RAND, RANDINT, and randint, no repeating, but we'll also mention what the other random functions do and their differences. Okay, so first off, I'm going to clear this, and what we want to access are the rand functions, all of which are stored in the math button over here. So we just need to hit the math button, and depending on your model, you'll see either four or five different uh, tabs here, math, num, complex, prob, and if you have a TI-84 plus C like the one I am using here, you might also have frac for fractions here. However, regardless, we want to go over to the fourth option for probability. So let's tab over to that, and we'll see all of our rand functions here. We have rand, followed by uh, NPR, NCR, factorials, and four more rand functions. Rand by itself is not as interesting, however some people do use it. What we will more likely focus on is rand int and rand int no repeating. However, first and foremost we have rand, so let's use that. If we do rand, what we typically want to do is put parentheses and put a number in there. If I do rand 20, what it'll do is give me 20 random numbers, but unfortunately what rand tends to do is give us really long decimals. That's mainly what it is for. Its purpose is to create random numbers between zero and one. So not as helpful, well, depending on what you are doing. Perchance, maybe you want to use these kinds of numbers. But very often in my circumstances, we're trying to select random numbers so I can make a sample. So decimals don't help as much. So let's go back to probability and let's select a different function. Now, NPR, NCR, those are for combinations and uh, or combinations and permutations. NCR for combinations and PR for permutations, and that's a different monster itself. Um, fact, and that explanation point is a factorial. But what rand int does, it helps us select a random integer and gives us values. It gives us a lower, an upper and an amount of values it wants to select. For example, let's say I want to select random numbers between 1 and 20. Say I have a random group of 20 individuals, I give them all numbers, and I want to select a group of them. Maybe I want to select three of them. I plug that into my wizard here, I paste it, and this will post onto the home page. Now, again, if you do not have a wizard, some 84s don't have the wizard for random, and 83s don't have wizards at all, really. Um, if you don't have a wizard, what you'll get instead is this screen. You'll just have random int followed by an open parentheses and nothing else. All of this will be deleted away. This is what you'd get if you have different 84s or 83s, and you need to type in the rest. So again, three prompts, the minimum the maximum value, and how many I want to select. If I only do the first two, then it's just going to give me one random number between 1 and 20. Okay, but 1, 20, 3. Fantastic. Press enter, and bam, it gives me three random numbers. Maybe those three numbers weren't good enough or I need to make another sample. I can hit enter one more time, and it can make another group of numbers. However, notice what had happened here. This group of random numbers selected 5, 19, followed by yet another 19. Now why did that happen? The reason is because random int or rand int as a function has uh, replacement, meaning that after a number has been selected, it is put back into the pool of selectable numbers. So once 5 has been selected, it gets put back in, and yet again there are 20 values that could be selected. That could pose a problem, particularly if the first set of numbers you have has repeats and you don't want to select the same individual twice. Usually to remedy that, 
you just hit enter again until you get a random group of numbers like this that don't have any repetition. Wonderful. Now, depending on the module model you have, you may also have another function. Over in probability, we did rand, we did rand int, but you might also have this eighth option for rand int no repeating or no uh, replacement. This is pretty helpful if you don't want to run into any repeats at all. So I go into rand int no repeating or no, uh, no replacement and I do my same prompts as before, 123. And it looks very similar, it's just a different function instead. When I run that, it'll give me three numbers but will never ever repeat a value because once it's been selected, it gets taken out of the pool. Now that sounds great. Problem is with some TIs, uh, some TI-84s that I have seen does have rand int no repeating, but if you try to run this 120 comma three, it might throw an error. And the reason is some uh, 84s don't know how to run the no uh, repetition and what it does instead is it doesn't want a third prompt. So if you try to plug this into some 84s with three values, it'll give an error. To run it correctly instead, some of them you just want to run the first two values, the minimum and the maximum. If you do that, what it'll give you is the set of numbers. Every number from 1 to 20 reordered in some pseudo-random way. This works pretty well as, uh, as well, and it's pretty good for uh, sets of random values that are close to the maximum. Say I wanted to select 15 random numbers. Well, if I try to do rand int from 1 to 20, selecting 15, there's a big chance I'm going to get some repetitions there. So rand int no re uh, repetitions helps with that. Um, however, again, some calculators don't even have rand int no repetition. In that case, what I usually recommend, say you're doing uh, rand int, and like the example I said before, you're trying to select 15 random numbers from 1 to 20, meaning only 5 numbers should not be selected. So if you try to run it with these options instead, you're probably going to get some issues. Um... Uh, this one's actually not looking too bad. Let's scroll through and see if I... Oh, I have repetitions with 10. That's annoying. So maybe I want to run it again. Even better than that, if I know I'm going to want 15, let's just overestimate. Let's say 25. And then I can select the first 15 that are not repeated. It's a nice little hack to get through the concepts. And then anything that gets repeated, I just skip over. For example, right here, 9, 5, 13, up, oh, I already had a 13, so let's skip that. 17 will be my fourth value. And I keep going on in that way until I have 15 non-repeated values. Those are the three primary rand functions. You notice that there were two others, rand norm and rand bin. Those are just different rand functions that calculate randomness in a different way. Random norm uses a normal distribution and uses a mean and a standard deviation and finds random numbers within those values, which is decent. And rand bin is very similar. It uses a binomial distribution and finds random numbers. It's just set around a specific value. Um, those are okay, however, those also have a similar problem to RAND where you tend to get decimal values. So, what I usually suggest is RAND int. It's probably the best RAND function. Now, before I leave you with that, one last little thing that I kind of like to do. Say I want to make a random list of numbers. Something that I want to mess with. And I just want to make some random data to work with. So say I go to math and I go to randint and I want to make, uh, let's say from 1 to 15, so value between 1 and 15, and I want to make 35 random numbers. I'm going to get repeats, but that's kind of okay. 
uh, and I just want to get 35 random numbers. Wonderful. So I run that, and I get a big old list like this. Now, I can write all that down, scrolling back and forth, and writing it all down to make my list, and then put it into the calculator for list, or I can be smarter about that. What I can use is this store button on the bottom uh, or left side here, S-T-O, and I can press STO, and you see that it says answer store. That's because I have not clicked anything else. This is going to take the answer of the previous function, and it's going to store it into whatever I want. And what I want is to put it into list one. I can access list one by hitting second one, because L1 is in blue above the numeric one. This way, this reads the answer, store it into list one. I hit enter. It doesn't seem like it did anything, but that's because it gave me the output again. Five, one, 14, 13, four. Keep that in mind. If I go over to my list, I should see, there it is, 5, 1, 14, 13, 4, etc., etc. This second list was made from a previous situation. And I can even go to the bottom of list 1 and see that the last value is the 35th value of my set. Awesome. Then I have a random set of data that I can then run statistics on. I can do one bare stats and figure out some things. Um, but I've stored it in a nice, convenient way, and if I accidentally clear the home screen, it's saved somewhere. Awesome stuff. Uh, with that said, that's everything that I wanted to talk about with random, how to access random on a calculator. If you have any questions, feel free to put them in the comments, or if you're one of my students, please just come talk to me. With that said, I will see you again later.